Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Beach Walk Vlog, where I go for a walk on the beach and I talk about running stuff. So for today's Beach Walk Vlog, I want to talk to you about injuries and running and training for running. So the first thing I want to talk about is those injuries and why is it that the rate of injuries seems to be going up? Now recent statistics I don't know somebody's going to say, well, the statistics are just made up on the spot. But statistics show that runners uh, can suffer, 80% of runners can suffer an injury each year. That is a super high percentage of runners. When there's, there's so much information out there about how to train for running and how to, uh, how to prevent injuries and running shoes prevent injuries and um, how how much free information there is online for the prevention of running injuries so why are you still getting injured why are 80 percent of runners still getting injured there's got to be something wrong right there's got to be something wrong there so it's either down to it's either down to one of two things in my eyes Either the stuff that's put out there to prevent injuries isn't working or two, the stuff that you should be doing to prevent injuries, you're not doing it. So which one is it? So let's have an honest conversation about which one it is. Now I'm, I'm going to talk to you just briefly about my thoughts and opinions on injuries and, and I'm going to start this off with what elite marathon runners do is not what you're being told to do what elite runners do is not what you're being told to do or not what you're being led to believe so there's so many things that come into this but one thing i want to i want to say about elite marathon runners is that a lot of them i probably go so far as to say actually most of them and, and the, the, the majority, like the huge, vast majority, do not start off running marathons. They start off running 5Ks, 10Ks, maybe even less, maybe 3K, steeplechase, those kind of events, the shorter events that require speed. And they require good running form to get to those speeds. Now that's very different from what we see across the socials, which is I'm 40 years old and I need to start running and I'm going to run a marathon in six months. Now think about that 40 year old person who's been sedentary for most of their life, maybe the majority of their life. All of a sudden, I'm going to run a marathon and I'm going to do it in six months. Well, sure. Yeah, you might. But what's the chances? of you getting injured in that process because you're getting up from your chair and you're downloading a couch to marathon program which in a lot of cases is more like a couch to physio program or a couch to physical therapist program because that's where you're going to end up and it does it happens all the time i know i sound like i'm being a bit facetious but i'm actually not i'm being deadly serious why is it that so many runners either don't follow the program don't follow the plan or they just get injured following the plan it's either the stuff that's in the plan is is really not very good or it's not the right thing to be doing or the person supposedly following the plan isn't following the plan so where's the problem so if we go back to what these elite runners are doing these elite marathon runners are doing they are getting good at running the shorter distances. They're getting really good, Olympic level good, at running the shorter distances, the 5Ks, the 10Ks. They're getting really great at running those distances. And what that means is that they're focusing on how they run. They're doing their running drills every time. They do daily running drills. They are not going out there and saying, I need to get strong. What they're doing is they're going out there and they're running and their running is focused on speed it's focused on the on the mechanics of running because they're doing the running drills 
they're doing uh, they're doing lots and lots of running draws out and short distances which is the opposite of what they for example the couch to marathon program does it says here you go here's a program you can follow this program which builds up mileage and mileage and mileage and mileage and it gets you focused on that program now I'm not saying that that's wrong I'm just saying that it's probably not right for you and your body which is I'm not going to say not a running body I'm going to say it's not equipped yet to be a running body of marathon type distances and marathon type stresses and strains so why is it that these olympic level elite level marathon runners and just runners in general can put in these 75 mile weeks 125 mile plus weeks of running and you're getting injured after running eight miles why why is this you know you run three miles on a monday three miles on a wednesday and by friday you're at the physio at the physical therapist's office with an injury but it's probably something that you've ignored for the last six weeks because everybody on social media told you to run through it and that is where the sling method is different that is where the runner's rehab is different that's where everything in the sling method is different i won't tell you to run through something i'll tell you to pay attention to it and do something about it and what you're going to do about it is exactly what's in the runner's rehab and the basic eight which is to work on the movement there's drills there's running drills in there that show you how to work on the movement and the production of force in the right place at the right time and that that's really what the runner's rehab and the basic eight is all about it's about paying attention to those niggles paying attention to the things that are talking to you not presuming that everything is just tight and then just stretch it because that doesn't work we know that doesn't work for many many reasons which i've talked about uh, in previous beach walk vlogs so we're paying attention we're doing something about it and we are focusing on the movement and the stresses and strains of running to make our body adapt to the stresses and strains of running now that's very different from picking up a running magazine and saying right I'm gonna run this distance on this day and I'm gonna just stretch and do arbitrary strengthening work which is not the same and doesn't cater for the running movement or the demands of running so that's where the runners rehab and the basic eight is different firstly secondly like I said with the training that you're doing the I want to define again the difference between training and exercise now exercise if you go onto any government-based health website they'll say people should be doing 30 minutes of non-strenuous exercise per day and or whatever it is 20 minutes a day of non-strenuous or strenuous exercise per day and there's no thought to what that exercise is because it doesn't matter all it's about is getting your heart rate up that's it you could do housework you could do gardening work you could just go out for a, a walk anything is exercise that gets your heart rate up or that's movement that gets your heart rate up because you know watching a scary movie could get your heart rate up uh, you know there's lots of things that could get your heart rate up some caffeine for example uh, you could be stressed at work that'll get your heart rate up but that's not exercise so it's movement that gets your heart rate up that's really exercise but training has a specific focus with a specific outcome so it's a specific input with a specific output or outcome that's really the difference so we've got to think about what is training for running now if you think planks are training you for running they're not they're not training you for running because you're face down doing a plank if you think squats are training you for running they're not because you're squatting it's not running right it's the same with lunges and deadlifts and all of these things they're not working the actions the lever actions of the running movement so they're not training your body 
for the stresses and strains of running. How can they when they don't get you to A, move in the same way, B, produce the same forces, and C, half of them aren't standing up, they're laying down on your back or face down looking at the ground, or D, you don't even leave the ground, right? How can they be training you for something if they don't actually train you for that something, right? It kind of just makes logical sense, right? Um, so I need to think about the movement of running and how I'm going to train myself, train, see how it's always train. I'm training for a marathon, but I'm actually exercising. I'm training for this, but I'm actually not really doing the training for that. I'm just doing something that doesn't really apply. So if I wanted to be an Olympic level rower, am I going to go out and run? No, of course I'm not. I might do, I might, I might run, but it's not going to help me with my rowing. Of course it's not. If I'm going to be a, a cyclist, <clears throat> am I going to go out running? Well, I might do, but it's not training for cycling if I'm not on a bike and cycling. Of course, there's, there's going to be limited, limited carryover, but not much. So is it worth it? Probably not. So if you're going to get good at doing the something that you want to be good at doing, you have to do the something that you want to get good at doing. That specificity. Okay, so training versus exercise or exercise versus training. Exercise has no focus, has no specific input, has no specific output. Training has a very specific output and therefore should have a very specific input. Okay, notice how I emphasized should because it should have a very specific input. And if it doesn't have a specific input, then it's not training, it's exercise, right? And that's okay. That's okay. Like people, a lot of people get seriously butthurt when I say that you're not training if there's no specificity. But I'm not trying to be horrible. I'm trying to open your eyes to what's actually going on. So, if it's not specific, it's not training, okay? Now, we're going we're gonna to get to this thing about training and how do I get faster? Well, here's the thing. If you want to get faster, you've got to get fitter. Because we're not talking about sprinting, we're talking about endurance running. Now, yes, if you want to get faster at sprinting, you have to produce more force, period. You have to produce more force into the ground, period. Now, that does mean that you are going to be uh, under a lot of load and your body is going to be dealing with a lot of force. So how are you going to train for that? Well, again, you have to do the thing that you're going to do and force your body to adapt to the specific stresses and strains that you're trying to make it adapt to. Right? Okay, so, endurance running. How do I get faster? Get fitter, specifically for what you're trying to get faster at. So if I'm trying to get faster as a marathon runner or as a half marathon runner, or indeed for most people, say most people as for a 10k 5k or even down to a 3k and even even the mile you need to get fitter now the shorter the distance the less about aerobic fitness it is but the longer the distance the more about aerobic fitness it is now there's this kind of crossover point with a 5k 10k and anything longer than where anaerobic threshold or threshold training becomes extremely extremely important now speed work speed work for a marathon runner half marathon runner or a 10k runner most people we're not talking about elites here we're talking about most people and remember, most people are coming in between 50 minutes and an hour for a 10K, okay? So if you're somebody who's running 10K between 50 minutes and an hour, you're running it at your threshold. 
or very close to it. So if you're running it at your threshold or very close to it, it's doing lots and lots and lots and lots of speed work, i.e. 400 meter efforts, 100 meter, 200 meter sprints. Is that gonna be the thing that you need to do the most of? Probably not, no. What you need to do is train your threshold. So get really good at your 5K. Yes, there's an amount of longer distance, easy running that should come into your program, but if you are a 5K, 10K runner, predominantly, then you really need to be focusing on your threshold work. So it's not just volume, 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 it's volume at a specific speed. Okay. Now, if you are somebody who is not doing enough volume, I'm going to go and tell you to run more, as in run more volume. Just, just go and run more volume. Because if you're only running once or twice a week, chances are you're probably not going to increase your run and fitness that much. So run more is the answer. If you're somebody who's running a marathon or trying to train for a marathon, and you're only doing 12 miles of running per week, and you say, well, how am I going to get fit? How am I going to get faster? Well, firstly, your goal is not speed. Your goal is the marathon. So focus on the goal. Secondly, once you've done that marathon, come back and we'll have another discussion. Because then we've got some real detailed data and some good information to work from. But until you finish that goal, don't worry about speed because really, you're gonna get faster anyway as you run more. Because guess what happens when you run more? You get fitter. You get fitter specifically for running. That's why I say run more. Now, if people are gonna argue with that, they're gonna say, oh no, don't run more. No, no, it's not about how much you do. Okay, cool. So why are these elite runners out there running 120 miles plus per week if it's not about mileage? question don't worry about answering it just think about it why is it that when you train for a marathon you run more mileage progressively as you get fitter and adapt to the load and demands of running why is that why do you run more mileage why don't you just stay at eight miles because it's about running more and getting fitter now fitness encompasses so many different things one of those things is endurance and that is exactly what you are training for, endurance. Now, when you train for endurance, you do get fitter. You naturally get fitter, of course you do. Of course you do. It's the same thing as when you're lifting weights. If you progressively lift heavier weights, you naturally get stronger. So change that word fitter for more enduring. You, be you become more of an endurance athlete, more of an endurance runner. That's, that's what your goal was. Now, there is, of course, the people that um, are running shorter distances who don't necessarily need to run more, but that's the minority. That really, truly is the minority because, you know, most people I see on the socials who say, how do I get faster? Well, it's, it's just such an open-ended question. How do I get faster? That's like asking somebody, uh, for directions to somewhere where they don't know where you are at the start. Well, how do I get to New York? Uh, well, where are you? Is the first question you should be asking. Same thing applies to somebody asking, how do I get faster? Well, the first question back to that person should be, where are you now? I.e., what's your 10K time? What's your 5K time? What's your half marathon time? What's your marathon time? What are you even training for? What speed are you looking for? Is it aerobic speed? Is it anaerobic speed? What is the goal? What's Where are you trying to get your speed? Over what distance? Okay, so the, the question, how do I get faster? There are a lot of uh, variables involved in that answer. So, in asking the question, how do I get faster, there, there's, there's so many variables there that you can't get a simple answer, and there has to be a question back. Now, let's just say, let's just think of a situation, right? 
somebody started marathon training and they are trying to get faster but they don't know what they're trying to get faster for because their goal is actually to run a marathon well firstly I as a coach as a running coach would say to that person what's your goal I would open up the dialogue with what's your goal I wouldn't which is what you see across social media immediately just start giving a one line answer of hill training or speed work or uh, sprints or whatever I wouldn't do that I would say what's your goal okay so it, it has to it has to open up a dialogue so what I'm asking you here is let's be let, let's let's think a little bit deeper I'm always asking you to do this let's think a little bit deeper let's think about when somebody asks the question I want to get faster well what are they trying to do because if they're out there running and they're trying to be a really great 5k runner do they need to go out and do 10 mile runs do they need to do long easy runs no not really no what they need is quality uh, uh, threshold work now threshold work is not hard it's not hard work it gets hard the longer you go so if i'm a 5k runner who's running 5k in say 30 minutes do i need to go and run much longer than 30 minutes because i'm trying to get faster is threshold work going to make me faster and fitter yes so do i need to really go out and start running six seven eight mile long easy runs because that's easy what i'm trying to do is go harder for a shorter period of time so that's time versus intensity and that time versus intensity applies everywhere everywhere all right think about that just think about that really carefully for a second if i said to you you're going to go out and run 20 miles how hard are you going to go well not very hard because it's 20 miles okay great so we've just established time versus intensity okay if i said to you okay you're going to go out and run three miles you're going to run it at the same speed that you run 20. no of course not because time versus intensity okay so do i need to if i'm only running 5ks i say only running 5ks in a in a form of distance and duration only running 5ks i'm not only running a 5k in, in terms of intensity because geez 5ks are super intense and they should be and so should your training but what you also need is lots of neurological recovery time from 5ks from the training for 5ks right that's what you need if you're running marathons or you're running long distance you don't need to do neurologically hard work because your goal is to uh to to do more mileage right your, your goal is to do more mileage because you're trying to get aerobically fitter for the longer distances okay kind of making sense i hope so my training plan for somebody who's running a 5k would be massively different from somebody who's running a marathon it would be very different indeed okay but it would also be different for somebody who's been a runner for 10 years let's say to somebody who's only been a runner for four months or somebody who's never never actually followed any plan before who's who's only just started running because i don't want that couch to 5k program or couch to 10k to be couch to physiotherapist i don't want that and i'm going to give each person i'm going to give them lots of drills to do and they're easy runs if they're new to running they're easy runs they're not going to have easy runs because they're not fit enough to do easy runs as recovery runs because again i hear this all over the socials 
and I see this a lot. Well, I, I, I barely break into a run and my heart rate's up at 150. It's because you're not fit enough to run at a lower heart rate. So don't. Walk or do some drills. Because again, it's about intensity and time. Okay? So if you're going to do a recovery run, you have to be fit enough to do a recover or a run in your recovery zone. And if you can't, don't. Because it's not a recovery run. So go and walk, which is what I'm doing right now, walking, right? So, so what are you gonna do? Are you gonna be a part of this 80% of runners are injured each year statistic or are you gonna change? Are you gonna continue to exercise non-specifically when you actually have a specific goal? Or are you gonna change? Because the only movement, the only movement that's important to a runner in terms of training it is gait, is the gait cycle, the movement of gait, all of the lever actions that make up the movement of gait. Now, if you're spending loads of time getting strong, doing an exercise where your heels don't come off the ground, i.e. a squat, you're making everything else stronger and creating a weak link okay because like I've said a thousand times strength is specific to the movement in its entirety in its entirety if you're not training that movement the specific movement that raises the heel off the ground at the right time then you're creating a weak link right it's like having a chain link fence where a lot of it's made of metal and some of it's made of like rubber. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a very good chain link fence if it's got rubber links, right? That's what you're doing to your body. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is how, so we talked about elite athletes and how most of them uh, start off their marathon training career or their marathon career, not even running marathons, they start off their marathon career running 5Ks, 10Ks, getting really good at it. Look at Mo Farah, look at Elliot Kipchoge, right? It's just two of the names. They started off as 5K, 10K runners and then they went to the marathon. It's the same thing with triathletes. Triathletes start off doing the shorter distance and then eventually when they, when they get a bit older, they push their distance up to um, Ironman distance or, or 70.3 right? because it's not as intense so it requires more training or more sorry should I say more mileage more time at lower intensity and that's probably what their bodies can handle at that point we see that a lot okay so um, a point on that Eliab Kipchoge didn't run a marathon for the first 12 years I think it was 12 years, might have been 11 years, of his elite or his professional running career. He didn't even touch the marathon distance. And we've got people getting up at 40 years old going, I'm gonna run a marathon in six months. Yeah, okay. What that tells me is you're probably gonna be injured in three. I see this everywhere. I've got IT band syndrome, I've got knee, I've got runner's knee. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop running because I want to run a marathon. It's like, oh, hold on a minute. You, 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 you're doing a crap ton of squats and planks. You're not training for running. So learn, learn. This is the thing about the sling method. I want to teach you the differences between the movements. That's what I want to do. I want to show you the difference. Because as all of the elite runners out there show us. Every time we see a picture of them doing squats, they're not strong in a squat movement, but they're ridiculously powerful when it comes to their aerobic capacity to produce their gait cycle over a 42.2 K marathon, 26.2 miles. They're ridiculously powerful in that. So we're, we're trying to compare people in their squat strength which takes what five seconds to do a squat 
two down, one hold, two up, whatever the whatever the ratio of timing is. We're trying to compare somebody doing a squat to somebody who has a 2.8 to 3 meter stride length, step length, should I say, step length from their right leg to their left leg. 2.8 to 3.3 meters. That's huge. Can you imagine the power that's going into that? Right? It's a huge amount of force. But that's nothing like doing a two-legged squat with weights on your shoulders. Can you see the difference? Right? Also, that 2.8 to 3.3 meter stride length, that's Mo Farah. Massive stride, massive step length. That requires very, very different movements to what a squat requires. Okay? It requires a very, very different movement to what squatting requires. Massive difference in range of motion. One leg, not two. Torso rotation, thoracic depression and elevation, pelvic depression and elevation. It requires a huge difference in movements. So just think about that. And I'm not saying don't do squats. I'm saying understand the difference. Okay, you're welcome to go and do squats. Right? But don't think that how much you can squat dictates how fast you can run, because it doesn't. Especially if you're an endurance athlete, which most of you are trying to be. Okay? Now, that training for your marathon or training uh, for the, uh, the goal that you have, you have, let's say you've just got up off a chair for the first time in 20 years. You've been sedentary for 20 years. You've had a desk job for 20 years. You've had a phone stuck to your shoulder and your ear stuck to the phone, i.e. your head is tilted to one side for hours every day. You drive your car to work or you get on a train and you have really not good posture. How do you think that's going to translate Another thing, you sit there with your legs crossed. How do you think that that's going to translate into how you run? Just ask yourself that question. How is how my body is postured going to translate into how I run? I'll tell you the answer. It's going to translate into the 80% of runners that are injured every year. Sometimes on repeat, every year they get injured every year they don't recover every year they try and do the same thing on repeat over and over again so they do the same thing and they get the same result nothing changes right nothing changes they go through their lives being that statistic every year because they're not changing anything because they're not working on how they move yeah, yeah, they're getting stronger. Yeah, 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 yeah. My squat strength is through the roof. Yeah, I can hold a plank for three minutes now. whoop de doo Still injured. Still injured. Every year, still injured. Same injury. Or same injury plus a new one. Or same injury plus two new ones. It's because nothing's changed. You're still trying to run, which requires the same movement that you still couldn't produce last time on a body that's even stiffer, yes it's stronger, but it's the wrong strength. It's even stiffer than it was the first time, but of course you've been stretching, so you're more flexible, right? Maybe, although that doesn't make any difference because we know that elite runners are actually less flexible than most people because they've adapted to what the movement of running needs, which is stiffness in the right places which is not what you have, you have stiffness in the wrong places, okay? So when we talk about elite runners being stiff, that's the elasticity in their bodies, in their tissues. There's nothing to do with whether they can touch their toes or not, <laughs> right? That's just one measure of one muscle group, kind of, in one way. It's not a measure of anything else other than what it measures. It doesn't measure 600 muscles, 630 plus muscles in your body. It doesn't measure your flexibility through your thoracic spine or through 
your ankle dorsiflexion it's it's, it's such a it's such a silly measure it doesn't measure meant anything really the stiffness is talking about how quickly you can get off the ground and that's the opposite of flexibility that's the elasticity the elastic stiffness okay it's very different it's very very different in fact it's it's so different it's the exact opposite of okay so we talked about uh, training versus exercise. We've talked about training specifically. We talked about injury rates in runners. We talked about the 40 year old getting off the sofa and doing a couch to physiotherapy, or, or uh, sorry, couch to marathon or couch to 10K. Couch to physiotherapy, same thing. So we talked about all of that. We talked about why you are a part of that statistic and why you're not getting anything different year on year. You keep getting the same thing. So, is that you? Am I talking to you? Well, if I'm talking to you and you can relate to all of that, then you know what you gotta do. You know what you gotta do. You must be fed up of being that statistic by now. You must be. I would be. I was. So let's, let's change that statistic. Let's not be a part of that statistic. Let's be different. Let's be different, let's change it, okay? That statistic has to change. And if the same garbage information is getting put out everywhere, over and over and over again, same information, get stronger, get more flexible, do more planks. If that's the same garbage information that's led to the results that it's already got, then it's not gonna be any different next year, is it? It's not going to be any different any year. It's going to be the same, right? Think about it. Just have a think. I'm going to leave it there. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.